Hi, you guys. We're here. It's 3 o'clock. I'm sorry it's a minute or two late. I had to go get a drink of water real fast. I've been thirsty. I don't know about you. Anyhow, it's been neck and neck as to whether I was going to do encased florals or whether I was going to do head pins. And up until about two minutes ago, I was still trying to decide what I was going to do. Here's the thing. With, if we did head pins, which is essentially, instead of your typical head pins, I do kind of a, a sculptural thing, um, teaching you how to do sculpture on a wire, which makes some really cool stuff. And I had thought this could be fun if we made teacup gardens for Mother's Day presents, that that might be kind of a fun thing to do. And I would teach you how to make little teeny tiny figures on wires and stuff. And this would give you enough time to get them done. So I see you guys are watching. Um, but then again, I had a couple more votes over half of encased florals. And yet, I haven't made a lot of encased florals in years. So um, I think we're gonna do encased florals and I'm gonna cross my fingers and I hope you're all crossing your fingers for me too because it's been a while. Sculpture, I've got any time I can do that. But in case florals, well, this is gonna be a fun experience for all of us. Anyhow, let me hook up my, um, my phone, video, whatever you wanna call it. And I've got it in a slightly different position, so I hope that it works for all of us. Okay, so good seeing all of you. Oh, oh, life's lessons, that's the other thing. Hi, you guys, I can see some of your names. This is really fun seeing you there. Uh, life's lessons. Um, last night I posted instead of a live demo I said a life demo accidentally and it was because I was really really tired so hopefully I will think of some sort of life lesson for you before the end of this other than of course be kind to each other boy we all need it this is kind of a crazy time so I'm gonna reverse everything and we're gonna get to working on an encased floral Everybody cross your fingers for me, and if not, laugh along with me, okay? All right, catch you. I'm flipping you around now and hooking you up. See you soon. Okay, you can still hear me while I'm trying to set up my phone in this funky little holder thingy that I have here. I'm looking to see. I can see my hands down at the bottom and on the side so I know how far I go apart. And don't forget, sometimes my phone gets too hot because of the flames coming up from my torch. So if it kicks off, what I'll do is I will finish it up later on after the phone cools and we'll have live demo part one and two. But I have to wait until it cools so I can watch the video to see how far it actually got. So let's get this started and um, I know my voice gets quieter as soon as I sit down because I'm real close to the phone right now, standing up still. Uh, so maybe you have to turn up your volume a little bit. I'm sorry, but I kind of <clears throat> run out of voice sometimes. There we go. We've got my handy dandy miner. And while I'm putting away my iPad and stuff like that, I need to mention, um, I took a wonderful class from JC Harrell yesterday online and it was a blast so i highly recommend it if she's teaching more of them and i understand uh, another lamp worker who i think is just marvelous jerry warhaftig is teaching a boro chains class online and i hear that that is super great also so i'm recommending that i haven't taken it but i've had her as a teacher before and she's a friend also and i think she's fantastic so if they're still teaching classes and you feel like having a class online, do it. And I'm thinking I might join in on the bandwagon and teach some sculptural classes too. So I'm contemplating it now. If there's something that you'd like to learn in a paid class online, um, in a group, kind of like this on Facebook, let me know what you're interested in. Of course, it will be sculptural. Well, I shouldn't say of course. I can teach beginner classes and intermediate classes and other things also. But that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, let's get started with an encased floral. So I'm going to start with a 332nd mandrel. 
and probably my didymiums. And if you haven't seen these didymiums before, I have these really strong uh, magnifiers on them, which helps me see because I am not a youngster by any means. So let's use this as a base color. And let me grab a mandrel. Oh, this mandrel looks fine. And I'm going to want to have some sort of vining leaf on it. You can make them a bunch of different ways, but let me see whether I have one that's already made up. That would make things faster. I like to stripe a cane just a little bit with a little variety of color. This one doesn't quite have stripes, but it's got a little variety of color. It will show up a little bit on that, and I need some clear. Now, when I do encased florals, which I don't do often, I like to use this larger clear rod. Okay, um, this is, I think, 12, 14 millimeters, something like that. It's a little bit larger. The reason why I use this is um, you've got more good stuff on the inside and I'm a fan of the nice clear stuff and we'll be looking at this and how much um, we need and I also want to have some white to go underneath a color or a pale color to go underneath other color I have let's see I need a good transparent to go over the top of that that will show up well I tend to like purple but that doesn't go well with this so give me just a sec while I'm looking to see what I have here I like a pale color so that the transparent shows up well. And of course, the one color I don't have sitting on my table as well, I got some white over here. It's in case, but we'll use it anyhow. That way we can go over to some of my favorite colors, which is, this is ink blue. We don't need this one. And let's go to the side. Here's a pretty color. We'll keep those out also for flowers too. Okay, I think we got this. That's a thicker one. And let's see, is there anything else? Oh, we could add a touch, maybe, of dichro. If we've got some dichro in there, that's pretty. I love Lori Riley's dichro. You see this color? It's real pretty. It will show up on there. And this one is called Mixture. <laughs> I don't know the correct term for it, but it's kind of a aqua-ish color. Anything from through Lori Riley is wonderful. Okay, mandrel ready. We're going to keep this bead on the smaller side just um, because they take a lot of time and I, I get concerned that it's going to get too hot and then my phone's going to stop working. That's a terrible feeling. So we're going to make a base bead and we're going to keep it on the slimmer side because we're going to have lots of layers. And of course, this is perpendicular to the mandrel as I start one end. And I'm just going to keep going down the mandrel and add a base bead onto it. So this one's going to have lots of transparent clear on it. And we aren't going to do too many flowers, maybe one or two flowers on it because I want to show you but I want to um, not I want to have enough time to do it okay so we'll make it just a tiny bit thicker I need a place to put my dots on we'll do one more layer You can make them in any shape that you want. Some people start with kind of the donut shapes and just practice their flowers on a, kind of like a wider donut, and that works really well also. It always feels funny for me, a little bit funny, not too funny, to make a more traditionally shaped bead because, as you know, that's something I don't normally do. It, it feels better if I'm adding something onto it. I'm going to grab my marble here. Things do not need to be perfect, but you want the ends to be somewhat decent. I'll use my handy dandy tool here that just kind of evens things up a touch. And this one, even up a touch. Okay, 
So, what we want to do is we have our base and we want, to, let's see, how about if we add a little dichroic glass onto it. And I think that we will add a coating of clear because what I want is as many levels as possible. And over here, I have some, nope, that's not the one I want. This is the one I want. Some very light uh, aqua transparent. That will go great over the top here. The reason why I chose this over my wide rod is that I want kind of a thin encasement. And see that little schmutzy stuff on the end? We're gonna get rid of that. That was a boob. And we're just gonna give it a quick cover. Part of the reason why I'm doing that, not only because I want to add plenty of layers, but um, when I'm adding the Dicro, the Dicro has some clear transparent. And if I have a transparent base that I'm putting it on, it will blend in more evenly than if it's just uh, scattered across the opaque. Does that make sense? Oh, don't forget to tell me hi and where you're from. And you know next week, we're gonna do head pins and wire sculptures and all kinds of fun stuff. And if you want to start thinking about making like a fairy garden or something like that with some of the stuff that we're gonna do, I thought, you know, I'm gonna teach you how to do flowers and things like that. You might as well have a place to put it. So that's what we'll do next week. And we'll just kind of keep going until the virus is not keeping us at home. Because here we are, a bunch of artists in residence. And that doesn't make it a whole lot easier, but I'm glad that we're at least together and able to be online. And you know what? It could be so much worse. I'm very thankful for what we do have. And I hope you are too. It's tough sometimes, I know. So, see, I just kind of added a little bit of a coil of it. It's not perfect, but what I want to do before I melt it in is I'm reducing my propane so it's more oxygen, and I'm heating it up and just kind of pressing it down so that the edges, have you ever put on Dicro and then the edges get all schmutzy on you? Well, this is a way of doing it. Heat the clear up and press it down doesn't need to be perfect, but you're pushing down those edges so that they aren't going to mess you up later. So I'm just underneath the flame, pushing it down gently, well, relatively gently. doesn't need to be perfect. There are going to be flowers and vines and other things over the top. It's just adding a little bit of sparkle. And as you can see, my bead is very misshapen at the moment. Let's get it shaped up just a little bit before we get going. But can you see the sparkle in it? It'll add just a little extra something. So I'm heating it up to marber it. I've got my Cote Marber, which I love. I like it because the handle, if you can see it's very worn, is comfortable in my hand. I don't like gripping something very tightly and this kind of relaxes my hand while I'm working and it's lightweight, and it gives me a very broad base and a long base to marble on. So I like it a lot. There, that's getting better already. And we'll just marble a tiny bit more to even this up, a tiny bit more doesn't need to be perfect. You want decent ends. Just press that in a tiny bit. But if you do this type of move where I'm gently pressing it, be very careful not to mess up your bead release. And don't forget, if, if you want to use bead release like I do, I use dip and go, blue, sludge, whatever, whatever the concrete one is. And I think it's made through Arrow Springs, but I'm not positive. I think it's distributed in other places. I know I got mine at Flame Tree Glass in Roswell, which is right close to my house in a really nice glass studio. But that's where I've gotten mine before. Okay, so we've got this. We need to add a little bit of viney stuff. And this has, if you look carefully, it's got some little black lines in it. 
I don't like having a transparent, a green transparent over the top. It seems to spread out a little bit more. I tend to prefer more opaque look. And what I'm doing is I'm heating it up and I'm going to pull it so that it's skinnier. Because once you melt it in, it's going to widen a little bit, isn't it? So we might as well thin it out a bit. We're going to warm this up a little bit more. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of it so that I can use my hands because I really prefer to use my hands whenever possible. I don't know why. I think I just feel like I have more control that way instead of off of the end along something. What is it in baseball where you choke up on the bat? I guess that's what I kind of like to do if possible. That's nice and cool. Okay, so I'm going to warm up the bead. And this is just to kind of give an indication that there's some binding action going on. So, I'm a lefty, as you know. I'm going to warm up the bead. And I'm just going to make some little swirly stuff. And just kind of make it look like somebody loves it. So, I'm working to the side of the flame. And keeping my bead underneath. This is kind of like a little stringer action. And I just kind of get close to the flame if I need a little bit more heat to melt something. We'll add a little more swirly stuff. And we'll just attach off of there and add a little more. We'll go up here, add a little bit more. Just a few swirls. Probably, if I were thinking about it, I would probably do a more specific vine and have little flowers and stuff like that. But I don't, so that's okay too. We're going to heat that in and melt it in, and we're going to give it a layer of glass in between. But first, it's going to be gently heated and melted in. And let's start with the clear glass now. I thought before, you probably saw me hit this, I thought this whole thing was going to come off. So I'm watching it to see, ah, there it goes. I had seen the uh, fault line in it, I'm not sure what the correct term is, the crack, whatever. There we go. So we're going to melt that a little bit and then we're going to take off the part that doesn't look as clear. But I don't know how well you can see this. This is pretty clear glass to work with. I do love double helix. But let me be very clear. I love their clear transparent a whole lot. But sometimes people can't afford it. So I thought I would show that Epitre isn't bad either, especially for me using the larger uh, 12 to 14 size. And I'm adding a layer of clear. I'm just wrapping it around. Giving it just another layer in between. And we're going to give it a marber. Looks like I may have smudged some of that green that I had the top, the um, top of the bead too warm, but we'll find out. If in doubt, add more flowers to cover it because that's what people are there for, the flowers. Now you know my secret. If in doubt flowers. Okay, so let's add some flowers. Now, ah, there's some white. So what I'm going to do is pull a stringer with the white and we're going to make dots with it. And you make five dots kind of fan out a little bit in a circle. So we're going to pull some stringer. Keep your bead warm. But not too hot. Okay, so I do one dot and then another dot kind of next to it. 
and then I do one farther away. That one was, was kind of wonky. Let's heat up the rest of the beef real fast. Okay, that one was kind of wonky. I don't like how that looks. It's spreading out too fast, but because I've got that layer clear, I can move it around better. And then we fill in the last two for the circle. Like this. And like this. Ta-da! Okay, let's warm up the ends. Okay, so you see how they're the five? It's one, one, two together, and then you can do these on the side. For me, that's the easiest way. Maybe you have another way of dividing up five, but I think of it kind of like an old a star shape when you're making a star, boom, 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 but I make it more, I think more of the old kind of peace sign, Mercedes sign, where you have the skinny triangle, is that an isosceles, and then the ones across from it. Sounds like probably more information than you need. Let's do another one. So we have two, just in case one doesn't turn out. When I was first learning, I had this teacher named Deanna Griffin Dove. I don't know how many of you ever knew her. She hasn't been making beads for quite a while now. One of the things I loved most about her, besides her skill and her personality, was that she was willing to try anything. We'd say, can you do such and such? And she'd say, I don't know, let's give it a try. And I love that. And I think some of that kind of rubbed off on me a little bit, is that it's okay not to be perfect all the time. Well, if you're taking a class from me, I, I want to be as close to perfect as possible. But if we're just playing like this is now, I think it's kind of fun to say, okay, let's give this a try haven't done it before or I'm not the best at it, but let's see what we can do. So now I'm going to press these down just a tiny bit. And the same on these. I'm just using my brass fake stump shaper that I thought was a real one. Okay, we're keeping the bead warm, especially on the ends, because we don't want those ends to crack. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, it's hard for you to see from up there, but I'm going to warm up the white dots and hit it right in the center, and they're going to move towards the center. Now I'm going to let them cool for a sec so you can see what it did. And what I did was, you know where the flame goes is where the glass converges. So see how they all kind of ran together and you want that hole in the middle? Okay, we're going to do the same on this other side. First we're going to warm up over here. Then we're going to hit this. And we're going to melt them in. Don't have to take a huge flame, you can go slowly. We're going to go to the center of the dots. And now let's let them cool for a second. It's magic, isn't it? See how they all kind of went together? We got the beginning of our flowers. So now we want to add some color to the petals. And I like multiple colors on my petals, so we're going to add dots on each one of them. And I like a little bit of the white to show if possible. We're going to add five dots, the pink. kind of went together there so let me just grab this and separate it just a tiny bit in between okay and let's heat up everything so it doesn't get too cool and we're gonna go back and do the next flower let's add some pink It's not that hard. Well, we haven't seen how it turns out, but so far, so good. It 
And if I'm willing to try things in front of you guys that I'm not perfect at, I'm hoping that you're going to be willing to try some things also and show me how you do them. How are you doing? Are you enjoying it? How did you do and do you have any questions? So what we're doing is we're melting this in part way and then I'm going to add a little bit more color in a different color. This is one of my all-time favorite colors. I love ink blue. I don't know what it is about it. I think I'm a purple person to start with. We're going to we're melting in this pink a little bit, and then we're going to add the purple. We're going to add a smaller dot of the purple, too, so some of the pink shows through, and hopefully a little bit of the white on the very edges will show through. We're just multi-hued. And I think I like layering color like this, probably because I used to paint watercolors before I started doing class. And I don't know, any of you watercolor people also? That's kind of how I started in class because I thought it would be similar to painting in watercolors. I thought I could layer the transparent colors and amazingly enough, I thought I was going to be making these in case florals. That was why I started doing glass. Kind of funny, I ended up so far away from it. I'm just adding a dot towards the center, but not in the center, purple on each petal. And we're keeping the bead warm, of course, because that's what we do. Oh, it's been years since I really did these. I did make two this morning, and I had fun. And one of the things I thought was, oh, it would be so much fun to add some of my marini into this also. Okay, let's melt these down. We're hitting it again in the center, and I'm not so concerned. It's going to be pretty. Because flowers are always pretty, aren't they? Okay, we're going to melt these flattish. For the center, we're going to put a hole in the center and then some clear, and that's going to make a puddle on it. So once these melt in farther, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I've got these. You can use punches. You can use sharp picks. You can use a mandrel of the size that you want. You can use whatever you want. I like this fat round one for bigger flowers and this skinnier one for little flowers. But wouldn't a little butterfly marini look pretty right there? I think so. Okay, let's get this a big center. I'm going right in the middle and I'm pushing down. Pretty far, huh? We're going to do the same on the next flower. Pushing way down. Okay, so now I need to heat up my transparent clear. And we're going to put a big dollop right in the center. And then I'm going to show you how I encase them afterwards, which might be a little weird to you, but it works for me. I like lots of encasing because I think it looks prettier. Okay, so we want this soupy hot. We want where it's going warm but not hot at all. And this glass soupy. And we're gonna put a big old doll right in the center and pull up plain cut. And it's raised right now, don't worry about that. And do the same on this side. We're gonna make sure that the ends are warmed up a little bit also. Nice and soupy for my dollop. And in it goes, right in the center, plain cut. Okay. So you see that big old dollop? Isn't that pretty? Now what I'm going to do is get a bigger dollop of very hot glass. I'm going to keep this warm, not hot, 
and I'm going to get this soupy hot and a pretty good size gather and I'm going to go right over the top of these flowers and I'm going to leave a big old bunch of transparent hot clear glass. I'm going to cover up the flower with the hot clear, make sure all of it's covered. There we go. <laughs> that looks odd, doesn't it? Hang on. We're going to do the other side, and then I'll show you what we do from there. Another really large, hot gather of glass. Almost there, nice and hot. Right over the center. Cover up everything. Make sure you get all the way to the edges. And if you need to, you can even press down a little bit with your tool to spread it out a little bit more while it's warm. Or if it's not warm, you can go from underneath and heat it up a little bit and spread it out a little more. You don't want to push too hard. Just kind of spread it out so it covers everything. And see what that does is it preserves what you've done. Now all we need to do is to add enough clear to match it around the rest of the bead. Oh, this is going to be fun. So we've covered it. We can see that some of the white will show on the edges of the petals. Just what I was hoping for. Okay, so can you see, I hope, that it's like big lumps of clear transparent over the flowers. Let's heat up the rest of it too. Keep it warm. Now we're going to add in clear around the rest of the area. And I like putting lots and lots of clear on it. It makes the flowers look bigger and bigger, spreads them out more, because you're adding more glass. And we're just going everywhere where the flowers aren't and adding more glass. Don't worry about it being perfect. And you already have a layer of clear with the flowers already so you're adding clear to clear which makes it easier also you don't see a transition line that way and don't worry about it being perfect at this point we can marker it a little bit let's just add glass get those areas that we're missing and you can kind of look at it and see well that looks really uneven I need more to kind of balance it I think you can see the flowers in there it's a little more in here oh this is fun like mucking around in the glass, huh? Oh, I shouldn't say that, should I? Okay, so you can see a little of the sparkle. You can see the flowers. Now let's make it look prettier. So we're going to heat it up and we're going to very gently marker it. And that clear is quite clear. It looks good. But I'm watching the color. I'm also watching where the lumps are and aren't. We might need to add a few dots of glass in some places if it looks too uneven. But for right now, I think we can even it up pretty well. And I'm watching the color of the clear also to see how molten it is. Very gently, just gently doing that. So now we've got this area rounded. Let's get the ends done. You can even add a little more glass there. And if you want to, oops, got something on that glass. Let's take that off. Looks like a little bead release landed on there where it shouldn't have. I need to pluck that off. Done. Okay. Feels so much better now. So we're going to do each end. We're going to marble and we're going to see if we need to add more glass or whether it's okay. 
but I'm just heating one end at a time. I want the glass to move. This will keep this glass in place while we're just doing one side and very gently marbling it. We'll marble a little bit more. That's not quite round yet. It's kind of pretty though. Okay, so let's do the same on the other side. Can you see that flower? Kind of pretty. Okay. Can you tell I'm easily pleased? You can see the vine in there with the little bits of the stripes and stuff too, and you can see the dichro. to do, but I think that's rather pretty with the flowers, and when this cools, it's going to have this color in the base, which I think will be very pretty against that color. So you want to think of contrast, and you want to think of how much you want to put inside with the flowers. Now, if I wanted these to cup some more, I shouldn't be pointing like that, if I wanted these to cup even further, I can add another large dot of clear over them and that will sink them in once it's melted in and give it more of a cup or a bell shape. And that's another possibility, but we've been doing this for a little while now and I just want to finish up. Another thing that I would probably do on this is add some end caps. I think those would be very pretty too. We're almost there. Do you see the angles that I'm marbling on to get the ends on these? When I marver, see how, can you see that angle there? I do it like that depending upon the angle. This is really nice for me for doing that. But it just, if you marver on an angle like that, it just makes it easier, I think. And I'm holding my bead on an angle like this, so as it's heating up, if, if I held it straight up, all that glass would be dropping towards the center. This is keeping it more, as it's getting hot, in the direction where I want it to be, down instead of up. And as I'm marbling, it's cooling down that glass also while it's spreading out a little bit. Okay, so we'll do one more of this. We're going to keep this shortish. And this side. Sure that that's even too. And how about if we add just a little bit of something on the end? Should we add blue? Or I kind of like just the transparent purple on it. Pink blue. How about if we just go around the edge here? Whoops. Let's warm up the bead. My glass did something weird. It broke off, so we need to go back to where we were and add a little bit more. Let's add another bit of rim. So that's, I think, about two laps around there. Keep everything warm. Keep this side down a little bit as I'm getting ready to marble it. Marble it downward. Downward dog. And let's do the same up on this end, too, some of the purple. I think it'll just be pretty with the flowers and the teal. I like these color combinations. And we're just going right up around the edge. And now we're going downhill, right, because we want to keep it downhill. This is narrower than this, so I need to heat up the glass a little bit higher up also. And marble on an angle. And then even things up. Oh my, oh my, no 
wonder I do sculpture, huh? That looks closer. And I got goo on it again from my feed release. Oh, you guys. How you can deal with this day to day is beyond me. Okay, we are going to stop here. Let me heat it up all over, and then I'm going to hold it up to the camera so you can see it. And thank you for joining my fun time with playing with encased florals. And next week, we're going to work on wire type beads. And we're not, see, we did one with a little dragon on it. I'm not sure whether you can see that. We're going to have fun making all kinds of things if you want to make a fairy garden or just learn how to make flowers on them or whatever. And here's the bead. I guess it needs to go like that. it up and pop it in the kiln. Thanks for joining me today. This is Marcy Landerson and don't forget to find me on Facebook and I'm also on Instagram under Marcy Lamberson on oh that's enough for now and don't forget I have a glass group called Glass Art and Beads by Marcy Lamberson. Hope you'll join me there. I ask questions and when I have shows or special sales those are the people that get to know first. Okay, take care. See you next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye. And we're off, I think. <laughs>